guys, what's up? It's Sophia, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post videos about health and lifestyle. So I recently uploaded my college decision reaction video and I first just wanna say how grateful I am for all the love I got from that video. I got so many nice comments and we had a lot of people join this family and subscribe to my channel from that video. So I just wanna say how appreciative I am of that. But a lot of people asked after I uploaded that if I could post a stats video. So that is what I'm filming today. I'm gonna be talking about my high school stats that got me accepted into college. I first just wanna say that the purpose of this video is not to brag in any way. I honestly was a little unsure if I wanted to do this video because I usually don't like talking about this type of stuff. I feel like whenever people talk about this, there's like a certain level of mental comparison that people do and I just don't like that. But I know that through uploading this video, I'm gonna be helping a lot of people out um, who are entering the college admissions process and that process is very stressful. So I'm here to help you guys in any way that I can. If you wanna see more videos on the college application process, just comment them down below and I'll be sure to do them for you. But yeah, let's just get this video started. All right, sorry if you see me like looking down, I'm on my laptop right now because some of this stuff I don't remember all the way and I wanna make sure I get the information right. But I'm gonna start off with the classes I took throughout high school and then my grades and grade point average. Um, but I first wanna explain like how my school offered classes and how they offered AP and IB classes. So my high school is an IB high school, so students who are pursuing like advanced courses are mostly encouraged to become IB diploma candidates and starting their junior year they take basically all IB classes, three SL classes, three HL classes. So because we are an IB school, we only offer like a couple AP classes. And our freshman and sophomore year, the hardest classes we can take are just honors classes. Um, so yeah, that's why my schedules and the classes I took sort of look that way. So starting in ninth grade, I took biology honors, English nine honors, French two, geometry honors, health and PE, throwback to when I took PE, theater and world history and geography two honors. And I got A's in all of those classes. So my unweighted GPA for freshman year was a 4.0 and my weighted GPA was a 4.39. Moving on to sophomore year, this year the only like two AP slash IB classes we could take were AP Comparative Government and IB Chemistry SL1. So I took both of those classes. And then I also took English 10 Honors, French 3, Health and PE. Um, and this year I also took SGA. That stands for Student Government Association. Um, and it's like a co-curricular class, so we have a actual class period designated to it, but then we also do work outside of school. And then I also took Algebra 2 with Trig Honors, which was literally the death of me in the year that I realized that I did not like math. So I got A's in all of my classes except for Algebra 2 with Trig. And I still get so triggered every time I talk about this class. I got a B plus and that was the first time I've ever gotten anything other than an A. And I know some of you probably think I'm so annoying for being mad about that, but I don't know. I've just always been such a hard burger in school and always strive to get all A's. So the fact that I got a B plus was very frustrating considering how hard I worked in that class. Um, and also it was an 89.4. Point one. Away, point one away from being an A minus. But yeah, we're not gonna talk about that anymore. Anyways, my unweighted GPA for sophomore year was a 3.9 and my weighted GPA was a 4.33. So moving on to junior year. So this was the year I became a diploma candidate and I started taking my six IB classes. So my schedule for junior year was IB Biology 1, HL, IB French 1, SL, IB History of the Americas, HL, IB Language and Literature, HL1, IB Math 1, SL, IB Theory of Knowledge, and SGA, again, that was like my one non-IB class. And then I got straight A's in junior year, so my unweighted GPA was a 4.0 and my weighted GPA was a 4.89. So if you're unfamiliar on like what grades colleges see when you're applying your senior year, they basically will see your cumulative GPA from freshman to junior year, but then most schools will request a mid-year transcript from your senior year, so like your grades at halfway through your senior year. So my cumulative GPA that colleges saw was a 4.457. So and then in terms of my grades for my 
mid-year report of senior year. First off, the classes I took senior year or I'm taking this year are IB History, World Topics, HL, IB French, SL2, IB Business Management, SL, SGA again, IB Biology, HL2, IB Language and Literature, HL2, and IB Math Studies, SL. And then my grades for the mid-year report were all A's except an A- minus in French and then an A- in Math. So my unweighted GPA for senior year was 3.91 and my weighted GPA was a 4.79. So my entire GPA for like all of high school was around a 3.95 unweighted and a 4.6 weighted. All right, now I'm gonna move on to my test scores. So I mostly took the SAT, I only took the ACT once. Um, and the first time I took the SAT was March of my junior year and I do not recommend that. Take the SAT as early as you possibly can so that you can start studying and figuring out early on if you're better at taking the SAT or the ACT. I did not do that and it was a mistake. So the first time I took it in March of 2019, I got a 1330. Um, so I got a 680 in reading and writing and a 650 in math. I took it again in May of my junior year and I got a 1360. I got a 700 reading and writing and then a 660 in math. And then in June of my junior year, I took subject tests because um, I applied to Brown and Penn and they like strongly requested that I send in two subject test scores. So I took molecular biology and math one. And in math, I got a 690 and in biology, I got a 670. Um, and those scores are out of 800. So they're like, pretty good, not like entirely amazing. But I wasn't gonna take those again because I really wanna just focus on the regular SAT. Then took the SAT again in August before my um, senior year. I had just come back from the summer and I wasn't studying as much as I should have been. And I got the same score as in May. I got a 1360, but I did score higher on math. I got a 680 in math that time, so it was 30 points higher. And then I got a 680 in reading and writing. So that boosted my super score to a 1380. I then took the SAT again for the fourth time in October of my senior year. And I just shouldn't have, I just, oh my God, I should have just given up because I literally scored lower, 30 points lower than the last time I took it. Try to avoid taking the SAT or the ACT at all costs your senior year. The first semester of senior year is so stressful as is. You're so busy trying to figure out what you're doing for your application. School is stressful. Like uh, it's just not a fun time. So please do not make it more stressful than it needs to be by having to study for the SAT. When I took it in October, I got a 1330. And so I got a 670 in reading and writing and a 660 in math. So at that point, I was like very frustrated because I was studying, like I was putting a lot of effort into trying to improve my score. I did not take any like SAT, ACT prep classes. I did the studying all on my own. I just used Khan Academy. I had like a textbook. I did a lot of practice tests. So at that point, I had of just decided to try and see if the ACT was something I would be better at. So I took the ACT in October of 2019 and I actually did do better. I got a 31 composite score, which translates to like a 1400 SAT around there. I wish I had taken the ACT earlier on so that I could realize that I was better at the ACT and I could study more for that test so I could boost my score to be even higher than it already was, but can't do anything about it now. But that is a piece of advice I would really offer to people is try and take the SAT and the ACT like as early as you can to see which one you're better at. So in English of the ACT, I got a 34. In math, I got a 31. In reading, I got a 34. And in science, I got a 26. But yeah, I wish I had more time to study, especially for that last science portion so that I could improve my score more. Um, but yeah, can't do anything about it now. I was pretty proud of this score of a 31, but that was my test scores. So now I'm gonna talk about my extracurricular activities. Um, like my work experience, the internships I did, like things I did outside of my academics. 
So I'm first going to talk about my leadership experience. I feel like my leadership experience was definitely a strong point of my application and something that I wrote a lot of my essays about and something I really tried to highlight in my application because it was something that I was really passionate about and I was really involved in. So as I said, starting sophomore year, I joined my school's student government association. And then in junior year, I actually became elected to be on the executive council of my grade student government association. Basically my school doesn't have like a president for a student government, but we have like a council of five people who basically perform the same job as a president. So I became one of those people my junior year and then I was on that council again my senior year. In addition to that, I also was elected to be on my grades class council, which is like four people who represent um, their entire grade and plan a lot of fundraisers and events for just improving our classmates' school experience. My senior year, so this year, I was on a student advisory council for the entire county of my school district. So basically, it consisted of four representatives from each high school in the county. We would meet each month and discuss ways that we could advise the school board on improving the school district, on uh, addressing the school board issues, and we would meet with the superintendent a lot and different leaders from throughout the school board. It was a very cool experience. Another thing I did was a youth leadership program through my local government. So it consisted of about 30 kids from throughout our entire county. County. And the purpose of the program was to inform high schoolers on the importance of local government. So we would meet with local government officials and we would shadow them and just learn more about the importance of local government. And then we also were given a three week, three week internship at a local government office and I did that this summer after my junior year and that was such a cool experience. So in addition to those main things, I also had like a lot of other um, leadership opportunities that came out of being an SGA. I attended a lot of leadership conferences, um, which I won't tell the names of because a lot of them are locally based. I also received some awards from being in student government. I received the William & Mary Leadership Award and I was nominated for this by my SG teacher. Basically, it's an award granted to one high school junior each year to all of the high schools in Virginia. Um, so I received that award my junior year and I was very grateful for it. I also was chosen to be a representative for my school at the principal selection panel for when the school board was choosing our high school's new principal the summer before my senior year and that was really cool. And yeah, there was a, a lot of other opportunities I got um, out of being an SGA. So another big activity that I was very passionate about was the fact that I trained to become a certified yoga instructor. I went through a 200 hour yoga teacher training program my junior year. So every other weekend I would spend basically the entire weekend with a group of people um, training to become a yoga teacher. That was another thing I wrote a lot about in my essays because I was very passionate about it. Okay, so the honor societies I was a part of were National Honor Society. I joined that my sophomore year. I also was a part of Rho Kappa Honor Society, so that's like a social studies honor society. And I was in that junior to senior year. And then I also was in Science Honor Society junior to senior year. Um, in terms of like athletics and sports, I did track my sophomore year in the winter season and the spring season. Um, but after that, I didn't do it because it wasn't the greatest time for me. I also did performing arts my freshman year. I was a dancer at a dance studio. I also did my school's um, musical, which was Pippin, and we got to perform at the Kennedy Center, which is like this big um, performing arts center in Washington, D.C., and we actually received an award for this show, and that was a really great experience. Um, in terms of like employment and jobs, I worked at Cold Stone, so like the ice cream place, um, my junior year for a few months. I also did like a lot of various little things like clubs and stuff throughout my school. Um, I did Model UN my junior year. I did Operation Rise, which is like a volunteer organization that goes to like local elementary schools and does um, like science experiments with the children as a part of French club. Just like little things like that that um, I did, but I wasn't like very involved in, but I still was like a member of, if that makes sense. So yeah, that was sort of the gist of my high school stats. I hope this video was helpful to those who are entering the college admissions process. Please remember that you are so much more than your grade point average or your resume or your test scores. 
Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you want to see more videos from me on living a healthy lifestyle and more college related videos, be sure to subscribe down below. Please comment if you want to see any more videos on the college admissions process. I'm actually considering doing like a whole video on my essays that I wrote and like my comment up essays and my supplemental essays. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have an amazing day or night wherever you are and I'll see you soon. Bye.